Okay, so we've all seen this kind of image <clears throat> where they're doing this like with a magazine cover or something like this, and they got this all this hair selected. So this right now obviously is just a um, uh, a flat image on white. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to kind of go down the same rabbit hole here, but there's a little bit difference at the end. So let's go here, and I'm going to go through here again and go which one. Oops, which one's got maximum contrast? That's pretty good. I think it's that one. I think it's the blue channel again. So I'm going to drag this down, make a copy of it. And I'm going to start going through the same routine. But here's what you got to watch out for. And you got to watch out for this all the time. When I'm going to my levels to start this process and I go, okay, I'm going to darken this. If I go too far, See how it just starts eating up the edges of the hair? I can't do that. It's the same thing when you have your leaves. You got to find the, um, the threshold here. So I'm going to just take it as far as I can. Trying to keep some of that information in here. That's not too bad. See, I'm keeping, see, I'm keeping these wispy hairs in here. Okay, that's important because if I keep going too far, it'll sort of it'll wipe those out. That's that's probably about there, I think. So let's say that's as far as I can go with that. I'm gonna put this. Get my brush. It's on overlay. Now you just gotta block out this whole part. I'm gonna do this without a pin. Probably starting. Either Wednesday or Monday, we'll probably use a little bit of these um, of the Wacom pins for some things we're going to do. <clears throat> I'm going to take this off overlay just for a second, so I'm going to get this stuff out of here. Then I'll go back here in a minute. This interior stuff is, I don't really need the overlay as much because it's, uh, it's not going to matter. Okay, so let's go back to the overlay. And I got to be careful now going in here because I don't want to ruin like these highlights I want to get rid of, but I don't want to ruin these little parts where where the hair shows through. I like that. So I don't want to lose that. Like this little spot right there, that's just uh, like a sky hole in a tree. It's just showing through the hair. Then I'm going to come down here and try and get this. That's working pretty good. I'm going to try and see what happens if I don't if I sort of leave it there, which I never have before, I'm going to see what kind of selection it makes. Okay, so I think that's okay. So let's go, same thing, let's go select all, let's try this. Or actually I'm going to click my little thumbnail, control click it. And then I'm going to invert that because it's the background. Let's go select inverse. And I'm going to go back to my layers and see what I got here. And make a layer mask. And you can see it separated her out. So let's see how now let's do our other trick here and go to my grayscale again. Fill that with grayscale. Okay, so it's not too bad, but look what it did. See that haloing it's got there? See it? Okay, that's just what it's going to do. So what we're going to do here, 
is a really simple solution. We're going to go right here. I'm going to make another layer and I'm going to go Alt and make a clipping mask with that layer which means it's just going to lock it to this image right here because that's the information below it. And then I'm going to go to my um, uh, stamp tool, right? But I'm going to change this up here and we're going to start talking about this a lot more where it says current layer. I'm going to go current layer and below. Now the reason we're doing that is if you guys remember when we were doing um, the stamp tool we had to be on the same layer. Does that make sense? Well you don't anymore. Okay, So you're going to start seeing this control in a lot of places. What that is is it's contributing to that non-destructive editing thing we've talked about. Okay, Where I can take this now and I can do my uh, all my clone stamping on another layer. So current layer and below means exactly that. It means I'm actually on this layer and I'm going to work on the layer below. Okay, and, and then I can just turn that layer off or on or get rid of it completely and I'm working non-destructively. Okay, And you're going to start seeing that in a lot of tools. It also will have all layers, which means it would affect all layers. Okay, That'll make sense, especially as we get into brushes and things like that. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to get a, probably a soft brush, I'm guessing. I'm going to go bigger with this. And some people like to put this layer on darken, which is fine if it works. And I'm going to, I think I want to back off the, um, I'm going to back off the opacity a little bit, see if that works. Then I'm going to sample it right there. And you can see what it does, it's basically filling those problem areas with the same color and filling it out and getting rid of that or getting rid of that that halo because that halo is actually just really wispy hair and it looks like right there I kinda screwed up the selection and by the way you guys I'm always doing this for brevity I would be much more careful normally So I keep going back over here and sampling kind of the area I think like down here I'm taking the little darker colors because it's starting to go away from the light. Oops. I gotta go a little smaller here. I'm always holding all just like remember when we used our clone, clone tool we have to sample somewhere oh, yeah, yeah. right yeah. so what I'm doing is I'm going into the hair very close to it so I'm getting the same color oh. and basically the same value does that make sense mm -hmm. and again you know I, I probably would have Really, I would have spent a little more time on my selection to make sure I got a really good selection, but that's not too bad. Okay, see how we, now we've gotten rid of that haloing, right? Now I have this nice clean um, and this is what they usually do. Well, let's do this. So let's find, let's change this background color. So I'm going to grab maybe some of her color here. Not that, not that. Maybe even her flesh tone here. And I'm going to change this background color to some kind of color. So I could go with something like that if I wanted to. And then that also sort of tells me where I'm, yeah, I think it's okay. And then, you know, you do this, hang on. Oops, what did I just do? I'm going to give it a little more headroom. Yeah, 
They put the masthead behind it. And then some type and that's how you start getting these magazines layouts. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Very simple, right? There used to be a program called Knockout, I don't know if it's, it's probably not around anymore, that was for doing this kind of thing, but it was it actually had a weird learning curve on it. But you know, you've probably seen this a million times, I used to always go, how the hell did they select all that hair like that? You know what I mean? Um, that's basically it, right?